The shenanigans. Week. The pre-show shenanigans. Pre -show. We're live on Instagram now, though. We are live on Instagram? I, I hope so. Yeah. And yeah. we're live on Facebook. Said it was checking the connection. Let's tell everybody are. what we're going to do. Yeah. So today, we're going to be talking about mastering the mastermind. And this is getting access to sort of higher level thinking from multiple perspectives mm -hmm. that can transform your business life and your personal life. So that's what we're going to talk about. In particular, we're going to be talking about what it is, because um, historically, a lot of very smart people have used this. Right. Um, some people would say, like, even Christ and Buddha had their masterminds. Sure. Uh, but certainly, I think if we don't go back that far and we don't stretch people's heads too much right away, that uh, Franklin, Benjamin Franklin would be an example, mm -hmm. who uh, achieved some amazing things in both his business and personal life. And I don't want to get into whether he had some kind of... Concubines? You, like, I, I just, I don't want to get into that. There's a, the, the, the opportunity and the possibility of triggering is too high, and you know, right. that's not we what don't, we're about. We don't like to do that. No, no not because we respect our audience, uh, and we, we want to treat them gently as we always have so today mastermind what is it uh, how you gotta go about doing it because mm -hmm. there's lots of different ways you get to pick your own and why you must yes now there are some people I'm one of them that when they hear somebody else telling you must do this they won't right um, so if you if you're one of them just say well these guys well look, you don't have to do it no I mean you're welcome you to can... leave tons of money and <laughs> on the just table, on like, the table. <laughs> it's up to you <laughs> Can people see us? Yeah. Oh, we're in a Facebook Live event. Yeah. You know what? I was reading about video that the same shot. Oh, yeah. And we're drinking whiskey because we just finished a very difficult yeah, video shoot. shot. Yeah, we it was. replaced it with whiskey. That was yeah. so good. That The video was so good. So much fun. Um, yeah, so you can not do it and leave uh, fabulous results on the table. That's right. Or you could do it. So totally up to you. But I was shocked because I forgot that people could see us. I thought we were just talking on the podcast. Yeah. And then I, I looked over, <laughs> asked our producer, you're, how come you're not in the shot? I'm in the shot. Oh, you are? Yeah. I, I'm replacing the gray. Oh, there you are. Block. Still, I see yeah. it. So it's just yeah. a less blue block now. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. We're much better lit today, but yeah. Leslie is still very poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, we will. Leslie has given me a shopping list, but because I've been very busy for a while, I haven't acquired any of mm -hmm. her. But we're on the vert. We have to do it before yeah. Alex gets out of here. Well, it looks much better already with just the one. And it does, doesn't it? From Nick. It's yeah. astonishing. The other thing I not, uh, noted, and you'll probably tell me if this is wrong or not, is that you shouldn't have the static shot like we have for more than seven seconds. And we have people that watch it for an hour. So <laughs> we just want to say thank you <laughs> because you're awesome. <laughs> that. The tens of thousands of people. Well, tens of thousands of people don't watch for an hour, but lots of people watch for an hour. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a, so a, testament, a testament to how funny and entertaining we are. Yeah, so we have for a Or how bored we can <laughs> hold people. <laughs> that's also or how sad the, uh, the lives are. So uh, we have a Tools of Titan going out in July. You still have time to go to uh, iTunes and give us a, we've decided just to say a five star review. Yes, I think there's no point in bothering with. Four stars. Four stars. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. So if you're going to do a five star review, or better yet, this would be awesome. Uh, anytime in July and August, we have two things we're giving away Tools of Titans and Echo Dot, so that oh, the nice. NSA could just listen in to your home. Yeah. So there right was away. a story where a woman was being uh, attacked mm -hmm. by her partner. I don't know if it was a boyfriend or a spouse or not. And uh, the. Or Amazon a female partner. Let's not. Assume that all men are violent creatures programmed by evolution. That's right. Okay. That's right. So I just, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. Um, and the Amazon called the cops. So they were listening. Amazon denies the capability. Oh, well, but the, but come on. the, the, the cops like were called. She mentioned. She said cops in right. the altercation. She's well, like, if they, you don't stop, I'll call the cops. They had gotten and, it approved after that murder that happened where Amazon could uh, be the only witness. Wow, So that's how they got the approval to be able to interact with police officers. We were talking about something provocative earlier today. 
Just Pablo Escobar. Oh, we were talking about Pablo Escobar, and, es- and Alexa goes, yeah, we're talking about cocaine, Pablo Escobar, how he probably had a meeting with the aliens on the dark side of the moon, came back, yeah. like Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they were super yeah. young, and That's like, just... Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like, to- Pablo Escobar was like 25 or so, I don't know. Built like a that. multi-billion dollar... He was like the third wealthiest man in the world by the time he was like 25. So we're having this so, conversation, Alexa So what do you have, like a year left? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> 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 yeah. get working. So, so... You better join a mastermind. <laughs> I should. Alexa said, excuse me, I didn't hear that, or something like that. Interesting. I didn't hear that clearly. Oh, there she oh, is. She's, yeah, she's, yeah. she's talking, yeah. So you can have one of these. Yeah, so you can <laughs> <laughs> invite, yeah. Uh, invite spies into your home uh, on us. Yeah, yeah. And we're generally... Well, it's really on all of us. Yeah. <laughs> and you. It's on you. Yeah. So, but here's how you get... And, and listen, if you don't want an Echo Dot because of the spying in the NSA, I have a friend that's worked for the NSA for many years. He's probably watching this yeah. now. I'm not saying professionally. Right. And uh, at our reunion... A computer. <laughs> at our reunion, I said, hey, I have Alexa. Just go down the hall. You can listen in any time. Like, look, look, Bob. Yeah. Oh, there she is. She's talking yeah. again. So she could clearly hear us from there. Yeah. Yeah. And he did not crack a smile or anything. He just kind of ignored that and yeah. went on to talk about other topics. My grandfather was actually one of the 13 original founders of the NSA. Of NSA? Wow. Mm, very nice. So I feel like I'm somehow protected. I don't know if I am. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if they just like feel, ignore feel that Google anymore. Home. <laughs> so anyway... That's a long-winded way of getting into the, uh, the Mastermind program, which you're going to love today. But we really want you to like this show. We really want you to share it. If you share it, let Leslie know. How do they do. let you know, Leslie? So we you can... can either write in the comments or you can see my name attached. It's Leslie Must Drink Water. Just message me or message in top four with your name and address. Yes, because we, we want the address because we want to ship it. We have a winner that still hasn't given us her address yep. so that she's missing out on a Tools of Titan, I think. Yep. But we want a winner for another Tools of Titan and Echo Dot. And if you don't want the spying, you just let Leslie know no spying. I'll take the Tools of Titans, which we'll is a fantastic it. book. So, uh, that's a long-winded uh, intro, but we're going to have a plug right up front, because yes. you run a mastermind, if Correct. I'm not mistaken, where people pay you, and they are people from the martial arts world that Correct. run gyms. Correct. Uh, anybody outside of that world? No, so this, this group is, you know, we call it the Discovery Group. Uh, it, is, it is tightly niched for people that are operating martial arts studios or schools. And they need to be at a certain level in their schools. Where So if you're, you know, many people start out opening martial arts schools and it's just them. They're teaching all the classes and they're running everything. This is not for it's them. It's not for them. You're not ready. You, you need to have uh, some key people, at least one or two key people helping you um, run the school, teach the classes. Um, and you, you also need to kind of be a little bit savvy on the digital marketing things. And we're well. going to talk about that. Yeah. What, uh, because there are multiple ways that you could do this mastermind. Right. You can just get people from your local community. You can do mm-hmm. it virtually. There's lots of ways. You can, we have very sophisticated programs that we run. I run one with these two guys helping me, Amma and Lisa Snyder. Mm-hmm. And that is three days to success. And it kind of yeah. alternates. We happen to have two business black ops in a row. But three days to success and business black ops. Oh, we've got... Lizzie's being entertained by our viewers. Obviously. I have yeah. Allie Smith shared, and then so she said, "Yes, so thank you, have, Allie, for sharing." Yeah, and she said, "So you have my name and address from the Amazon Echo from the NSA transcript." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Allie, we might not have your address because Allie has been That's to right. three days to success, but I don't know that we have your direct contact information. So message Leslie and let her know. And what we do is we've got uh, she wants the Echo, right? So we've got, she'll be entered, and then we're going to pull a winner for July and August. So she should tell you which one she prefers, because she's a loyal watcher and sharer. With the Echo, she's getting seven whole microphones that listen to (laughs) (laughs) her. It says right on the box. (laughs) And Allie. We we're so so Allie is a uh, somebody that wants to help, and she's awesome. So now we're going to not let her off the hook. She's already entered to win, but we will implore you to listen to the podcast as a way of catching up on any shows you didn't see. And if you could leave us either a view, uh, both with stars or write yeah. one, we'll throw a bonus in. Whether you win or not, we're giving Allie a prize. Yeah. So. 
Uh, so I run two, and again, these are paid. Now these are a little different because they're not super niched. What's interesting about both yeah. of these is that they have people at a certain level, so they're niched right. that way, but from all different businesses. So we have therapists, medical doctors, uh, realtors, lawyers, psychologists, all manner of different businesses right. where these people come together. And the theory behind this type of uh, mixed breed mastermind is that we keep them pretty small, about 35 to 40 yep. people, and people are coming, and then we run this mastermind where there's a combination of lecture mm -hmm. at a very high level where we do a strategy day, working on mindset and strategic things that we've discovered that work, then a tactical day, and then a bring it all together day. So hence the three days to success. And Business Black Ops is just the same concept, but focusing on force multipliers, which are tools that people from, people who've been trained as interrogators, hostage negotiators, special forces operators, high level military operators, that all of these people that have come out into the civilian world, uh, clandestine operators, uh, have said, this is what I learned about communicating, this is what I learned about negotiating, um, this is a, a strategic way I've learned to do business or a tactic that we use, cover and move. Right. Um, and these force multipliers make your business or your personal life way more powerful. So um, we're teaching those and then letting people mastermind around them. Okay, so uh, mastermind, let's each give our definition or things you particularly like about it. So we'll start with you, Solomon, then we'll go Alex and then me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of this kind of like mixed um, approach to the mastermind. So I've been in mastermind groups where it's, you know, two days of hot seats straight and uh so let's tell people what that okay is. so a hot seat typically goes something like this you're in the room with however many people in your mastermind let's say 20. but typically it could be as few as three to five or as many as 20 or 30 Co but correct generally it's not going to be conducive to a mastermind as we're defining it to be much above 30 or 40. People. i totally agree totally agree and there are these you know mastermind groups you might call them like mega masterminds where there's 180 200 people and they're very valuable, but I think they're a little bit different than what we're talking about. Right. Like that today. would be something like Joe Polish runs with his yes, 25,000. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and they have ways of doing it effectively. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah. Um, so, one, one type of mastermind is the hot seat mastermind, where essentially, you know, you get in front of the room and you're on the hot seat, right? All the lights are on you, all eyes are on you, and you describe either. Uh, a new project that you're working and on. And is the mess my facilitator taking you through it or you're in charge of describing it? Uh, typically you're in charge, but then you have a facilitator to keep you and the rest of the people Focused. in line in the room. So, you know, you don't get too off, off track. I like that format a lot, but I find uh, for me and the rest of the people in the room doing that for two or three days straight, the guy that went first is sometimes getting a little bit of a fresher feedback. Than the than the people going towards the, the end. So I like the the combination of, you know, there's some lecture and didactic information happening. Um, part of the reason you joined this mastermind is because you wanted some of the the value and information that the other people in the room had to offer. Offer. Yep. Um, you know, whether it's the facilitator or other guests that he or she has brought in. And are you paying for this? Yeah. Which yeah. is probably good. I mean. Yeah. I've had people say to me, why would I pay? And my view is, it's fine to set one up and run it yourself where everybody shares the expenses yeah. of getting together and things like that. But it does not have the same effect as it, committing it's, money to it's learning. A, it's a different effect. It is. For sure. Yeah. And, it and can be very so, useful. You know, I'm in a, in a small mastermind group with this five of us, including myself. And that is, you know, we share the expenses. Nobody's, you know, making money off of it, so to speak. And that is that is purely <coughs> driven by the relationship that the five of us have, and and it's a very <coughs> very different kind of group than you know when I go to your group or which is also a very intimate group but in a different way, or the people coming to my group who are all paying to join. Mm -hmm. And Nassim Taleb talks about that a lot. Is the idea of skin in the game, mm -hmm. right? So a big big part of a mastermind group, whether it's a, a you know, once a year event, or maybe do three or four events a year, is this idea is you need to have skin in the game that creates accountability. So you're actually gonna implement and and fulfill these new ideas and actions that you're getting. Because it's so easy to go to a mastermind, you have all this stuff to change or to do or to transform, 
and then you get back and you're just back in the trenches of your business and nothing changes. And we're going to talk about how to to get away from that. But But if you're investing in this group, and typically good groups are not inexpensive. Right. Right. Well, they're expensive to run. We can testify to that. Absolutely. If you do a nice job for people, it's expensive. So there there is a long way of saying there's a huge value of having some skin in the game when you're part of a mastermind group. So um, before you go, Alex, I'm just going to throw out there because I think we might have glossed over this a little too quickly. This idea of mastermind is sort of historically recently, not that recently, uh, described by Napoleon Hill. Right. And the idea is that, uh, so if you're a Napoleon Hill fan, great, we caught your attention. If you're a detractor, don't worry about it. It's a pretty succinct. Um, uh, by the way, I, I have trouble imagining detractors of Napoleon Hill, except he did have, you know, some problems as well as his... Uh, well, I mean, he had some financial answer. problems at the end of his life. Yeah. And, and I think people... And this is the danger of going into a mastermind. If you go in with uh, the the wrong kind of skepticism, then it's not going to work for you. Yeah, right? we'll be able to talk You can about always that find a reason not to listen to someone and, and dig your heels in and stick to your guns. But the idea of a mastermind is, you know, you have to let your guard down. Be open. And be open. And some of the, the response is going to hurt. Yeah, right. And it, it challenges who you are. Yeah, and sometimes you're going to get uh, feedback from people that is wrong, but but Fair there's enough. part of yeah. the process yeah. is figuring out, you know, what's really holding a mirror up that right. shows you something you don't like. But uh, Napoleon Hill's theory was that by surrounding yourself with other intelligent people from different walks of life or from uh, who have a different view or a different perspective, mm-hmm. that you could uh, basically tap in to a higher intelligence. That if you could get your own brain to work that way and to look at things from multiple perspectives, to take an issue that's facing you and say, what's good about this? What's challenging about it? Uh, you're going to get some of the benefits of a mastermind. But if you add in multiple people looking at it from multiple perspectives who are willing to, to make a pact with one another to share respectfully and to try to be honest with one another about the good, the bad, and the ugly, that you're going to be tapping into this higher level of intelligence. And um, you know we see historical examples of this, like Franklin and the. Mm-hmm. I'm not positive I pronounced this junto, or junto, or yeah, uh, I've been criticized know. both ways. But Franklin did this very thing, and and historically there are many examples of people in sciences, in literature. There are authors that get together and do this. There are uh, marketers that get mm-hmm. together and do this, and and sort of focus the mastermind on one area. It is uh, more like what you're doing, where they're focusing on how to run the gym better. I'm sure there are aspects of how to make your life better. But this show and the two masterminds that I run are, let's get your life in order, and uh, let's get your mindset working better, and let's find out what people who have achieved amazing things in their... and the right kind of balance of their personal business. And that, that is one one of the key things that we are blending into the group mm-hmm. that we've, we've put together because it's so easy for anybody that's you know an entrepreneur or in some sort of professional practice to just keep their head down and dig and you know it's all about fulfilling the clients. But we got, especially people in martial arts, we got into it because we didn't want to you know, be working a corporate job or, or whatever it might be. Which you had when you I had and yep. I gave that up. And so is, you know, how can we help people be tremendously successful but have it be the quote unquote lifestyle business that gives you the freedom, you know, to, to do what you love and not have it drag you down. And for people in professional practices or in entrepreneurial businesses and startups, it's pretty easy to tilt from uh, the hard work that you have to do sometimes to being very tactical and just working, 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 mm-hmm. and then it becomes that your success is limited by how fast you can run right. in the squirrel cage. It's a good way to step out of the business mm-hmm. and look at and it. look at it at, at a higher strategic level. And then, like Sam was saying, if you're in a hot seat, or even if you're working in small groups, working on something, uh, some implementation or of uh, something you just learned, then you're getting input from other business owners that are not in the same industry or something like that. that And you're giving input too. So you get your brain working on starting to look at every business and every model and every tactic and every strategy and saying, why is that not working for them? Or how could it be working better? And what happens is it transforms your brain into an analytical machine that's looking at these things in a new way. So, and it, it works two ways, both because you're getting this help from the facilitator if they're good, like our, 
masterminds, three days to success of business black ops, are a weird kind of mastermind. Yes. Because they are a combination of high level lecture, but not lecture in here I'm going to tell you what to do. It's right. lecture that's designed to reveal things that we've discovered and suggest ways that people could use them. So we've got meta strategy day, mm -hmm. mindset, then we've got tactical day, and then how we bring them together so that you leave there with a plan yeah. to implement. And the one strategy. Of, yeah, one of the things we make sure that everybody does is schedule the time over the next few weeks and months in their schedules while they're there so that they don't fall victim to this thing where you get, you go, surely everybody watching, because we, we do think, by the way, we're testing out this idea of a tagline that's basically um, lifelong learners, which mm -hmm. we think everybody that watches this show is a lifelong learner and curious by nature. So it could be curious by nature, lifelong learner who likes really good stuff. Like people that like a good whiskey, good guns, artwork, literature, you know, because it's in being in top form. People that want fitness mm -hmm. and health and like to travel. We're, we're going to pause and talk about this in a few minutes. Nice. And where, wherever I've gone with this and worked, people keep saying, what is that noise? They've totally forgotten about the typewriter. So Alex, what it doesn't have is the carriage return. That's true. I'd like to do a recording. You just need a little like bike bell next to it. Oh, that would be bike good. Bell. Yeah. yeah, we just discovered a bike bell. So Alex, tell because you've been to a number of masterminds, and I'm curious. I don't know if you run any or not. Um, not yet. Um, but I, the mastermind is something that's useful for me because, like I said, it it allows you to step out of of the business because I work so heavily in either doing marketing for other people or doing marketing for myself. So taking a step out and focusing on something else other than marketing is super useful because there are so many different aspects to running a business other than marketing. And a lot of things I notice is a lot of clients, consulting clients come to you and they want to immediately start tactically. Yeah. Right. Like, okay, build me this funnel that does this without ever looking right. out at the bigger picture. Is that a problem for you and does the mastermind help with you to get them there? Yeah, so I mean, the way I kind of work them through how I, and the way I do consulting usually is that if they come and, and immediately want to run an ad campaign and run start running a sales funnel or something like that, then we usually take a step back and do a mini kind of one-on-one -on -one mastermind with them and get them thinking strategically because most of the time they have this idea in their head about how they want the marketing to run and how they want sales to run, but they're running it to people who don't fit like their actual the actual demographic that makes the money, or they're thinking some something farther down the road that would not work for them to implement right now. That you'd need to implement a couple things to work first before you start testing that. So, kind of getting them to think strategically by running them through a few steps and then running through like some test implementation mm -hmm. with them and getting them to understand that, rather than me just telling them that this is the strategy that you should use and this is how we're going to implement that and here's the tactical stuff behind how we're going to implement that. Getting them to actually understand and develop the strategy is how I usually work with consulting clients. So it's a, And I've learned that both through uh, the, mas like the mastermind format, your mastermind format, and just kind of experimenting with that on my own just because when I, in the past when you have, when I have just given a strategy and then done the tactical implementation with them, it's, it usually falls apart after either after the contract is up or after I've finished the consultation with them and they don't actually implement properly. But when they have, when they develop the strategy themselves and when they actually start implementing the strategy on their own with my help, then it's more successful. Well, I think that's the difference between going to a mastermind or being part of a mastermind group and just going to like a marketing boot camp or right. buying a product online. And, you know, we run into that all the time. And in our world, the lexicon is trials. You know, so people do a trial of martial arts classes where it's for them or their kids, but really it's leads, right? So people come to me and say, hey, Sam, if I just had more leads, that's all, you know, so they want the marketing, the shortcut, the system. Everyone wants the, more leads. The tech, <laughs> right, right. It, it, it's a cost, right. but, so, you know, for people that I'm either consulting or they're in our group, it comes down to this question. Well, if that problem was removed, how would everything else look, mm -hmm. right? So if you had all the leads, all the trials in the world, how would the rest of your business look? Oh, 
then you get the blank stare. And you're right. like, so maybe the problem isn't just having more leads. Now we can talk. Now we can go through a consulting program or you join my mastermind group and we'll spend the next 12 months working on it. Well, you know what's interesting with that story you just told is um, this happened to me and I sort of, uh, I've worked a lot of people through it. I've seen people work through the mastermind. They have a product. So I have like, uh, like a physical product that I ship that helps people to be a better negotiator, better persuader, more influential. And it's filled with strategies and tactics that hostage negotiators, interrogators, special forces operators would use that were you know, communications oriented. Mm -hmm. And we used to fulfill it ourselves. Right. Um, and so of course, like everybody else, we wanted more leads, right? But there was always a part of you that said, geez, if I get more leads, I'll have to pack a bunch of these boxes up and I'll be working after I work. Right. So we shifted fulfillment to DISC or whoever, uh, McManus and DISC we've used. Mm -hmm. And uh, the minute we got that off our desk so that it wasn't linked to fulfilling, you, you felt uh, yeah. like not only free to yeah. promote more, but more successfully. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing that surfaces in the course right. of these uh, masterminds. Mm -hmm. So let me give people that are watching uh, kind of a spectrum of choices. Now there are infinite variations mm -hmm. on these, but probably you'll like one of these. So if you've never dipped your toe in the water of the mastermind before, there is a temptation to go straight to the simplest one, which is I'm gonna identify four or five people who are either in my same business but outside of my geographic competition, if there's such a thing like that for you now. Or I'm going to, um, when I go to a particular type of uh, show, so I know they'll be there, I'm gonna meet them there, those sorts of things. We're well, just gonna set it up, you're gonna share the expenses, you're gonna rent a hotel room or a suite or a room and do this or you're, somebody's gonna host it in their office. I'm a member of one of these where I actually host it in my office. It's, uh, it's on Fridays, it's not every Friday, it's, it's periodic, and it's some very smart people and I get a lot out of it. But all of them have gone to multiple masterminds and mm -hmm. run masterminds. So it's a very informed way of doing that. Right. My actual suggestion is not that you leap into that, but that you invest in going to a one-off event, which is the kind that I run and other people run yep. them, or you um, invest in a six-month or year-long recurring one right. so that you see models of doing this. By the way, uh, just to give the uh, Bornsteins a plug, uh, 212 is coming up. And I went to this last year, mm -hmm. and Ferris was there, and the, the, these two brothers were on an amazing operation. And they had about 90 people there, but it was still very intimate because they broke up into groups yes. of five or 10 and had different mentors, and so you would rotate around. So it was constantly a small mastermind type of experience. But that was another one-off type of event. Right. It's 212, it was in Boulder, Colorado, it's awesome. Uh, but not inexpensive. Right. Now, when you've done a one-off event like that, but that's structured kind of like a mastermind, or you've done six months or a year, now you could go back to that other one. But if that's not in your budget, then you should you know, start one that's simple. I just yeah. think you're gonna be better at facilitating one and running it. Yeah. For, for me though, and for most people I've talked to, recurring regular meeting is really essential to making this work because yeah. it, it gives people the compulsion to get something done before that. It is, it's something we call the, the mental lollipop. And, and that mental lollipop. It sounds like there's a dopamine drip involved. Exactly, and, and that's really what it is. So like beyond you know, the mindset, tactical, strategic, you know, actual content that you'll be getting, there is a something else to it, right? The experiential component, you know, the dopamine response you get from meeting with people that you align with and like. And or, they have some know, shared, values, shared values. Maybe shared challenges exactly. in the type of business. And, and that mental lollipop, you know, gets you through the next 12 months or the next four months, however often that if, you guys are meeting. If you were just starting one up with either people from your business or uh, other businesses, how, I mean, you could do a one-off. You could say, I go to this trade show, so I'm going to do a one-off. Yep. And there's no problem with that. But that is ignoring the uh, accountability implementation right. piece. So if you're going to do one locally um, or recurring, how often do you think is optimal? 
I think once a quarter at least at, right is, is well if it's not local like so the one we run right. is once a quarter and it's because people are coming in from all yeah so doing any more than that is is going to be a strain but if it's local I still like quarterly as the low end yeah and maybe monthly because I think you the depending on what you're doing in the group there's probably a sweet spot mm-hmm. you know because I, I know think, it is and yeah because exactly. you want the group to be there yeah so monthly is very taxing yeah yet at the same time doing it monthly at least at the start here's the other thing these things run their course right right both when you pay for them in other words there's gonna be a certain point at which you'll still be benefiting from one mm-hmm. another but the perception will be there it's like what you were talking about the guy that does the first hot seat in three days gets the fresher mind the, you sort of feel like you know one another. There's always going to be somebody in these groups that says they're going to do stuff and then doesn't. Right. And then you know, no matter how much you like him or her, you're going to be frustrated that they are still coming and not and, doing And it. sometimes you get frustrated with the facilitator as well. Mm-hmm. You know, for whatever the reasons may be, is you know they may have gotten to a point where they want to scale their mastermind. So you join this as you know a twenty to thirty person mastermind and they've scaled it to a couple hundred 90 100 180 people and it's it's still a value but perhaps the the you know the remaining 150 people that came in need the information that you got last year right so it gets a little bit stale and repetitive John Wyman just uh, popped in and he says he thinks it should be at least every six months to keep it fresh he's big on keeping it fresh that's mm-hmm. John's tagline, I think, isn't it? It's both professionally and personally. I just want to keep it fresh. John, thank you for joining us. There are yeah. worse taglines. There are. Uh, anybody else that we need to address? Any issues, worries, concerns? Um, Stephen Pollock joined us as well. Stephen, yes. welcome. Yeah. John, welcome. Thanks for being yeah. here. So uh, I don't know if they know about the Echo Dot or Tools of Titans, but we should remind everybody, um, I don't think we can do it often enough, that if if you do a share of the show and let Leslie know uh, in comments or by message to in top form, or you uh, give us a five star, you don't have to give us a five star review, we just think it's silly that you would do something else, yeah. on um, iTunes for mm-hmm. the podcast, or you write a review on there, that should count double. We should put two into the drawings right. for anybody that does that. And we have Tools of Titans, which is an awesome book, and the Echo Dot as giveaways for July and August. So we want to let everybody know. We have some amazing shows coming up, too. We really do. So let's uh, talk about some of the specific things or experiences that, because we've all either hosted or been to multiple Mm -hmm. ones. So uh, anything in particular, Alex, and then we'll go to you and then we'll come back here. Uh, And you could talk about, in your case, what you learned either as a facilitator or a participant Mm -hmm. because in mine every speaker is also a participant that's right Uh, even Jocko came and hung out last year and although Jocko had plenty to offer Mm -hmm. and we were just uh, reflecting on how people thanked Mr. Jocko to quote for all of the amazing advice and the stories yeah (laughs) because Jocko terrified them he has one of those musters going on I think right now right it's either going on right now or just finished. It's in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alex, anything in particular that you got out of a mastermind or that was that you implemented or that has changed the way you think about things? Just reminding myself to take a step back every so often, even if the mastermind isn't running at a given time. Um, do you schedule that? Like, do you schedule time specifically or... Yeah, we've kind of discussed how you do it on a daily basis and on an ongoing basis, but that's kind of helped just to sit in with a group because the way that you do it is is pretty interesting, and I don't know if we should reveal too much, but you can the, lect- the lecturing with them breaking out into smaller groups and then imp- either implementing something hypothetical for your own business or helping other people implement something hypothetical for their business is extremely helpful when it comes to then planning strategically for yourself or tactically for yourself, how you, you know, develop headlines, how you develop bullet points. Yeah, I mean, we saw some amazing stuff come yeah. out of those yeah. groups last year, which hopefully people have implemented, we'll know soon. Yeah. Um, 
that's one of the things that I like about the group is the group is changing. So there's about yeah. 300 or 600 people in that world of business black ops. Or, right. But at any given one, there's only 30 or 40 people. So there's a core group of people that come all the time and have come yeah. for 10 years or something. But then people rotate in and out. But I have the privilege of seeing all the homework. Like we make them uh, fill out a bunch of things in advance, which people have described as uh, exhausting and frightening. But that stuff is really good because you can see the evolution of their thinking. Right. And you can see where they are glossing over something. That's something I've implemented with consulting now is they have to, depending on what stage of business they're in or what industry they're in, they have to perform certain th tasks before we meet for the first time. Yeah. So we, we talk about what we're going to be consulting or what I'm going to be consulting on. But then before we actually do the consulting, they have to give me a rundown of certain things that we do. Which I like that as a sort of filtering tool. So mm -hmm. you have prospects come in, leads, right? Everybody wants right. lots of leads. Mm -hmm. But not all leads are created equal. And getting people to do something shows their investment in it. They get skin in the game right. by paying maybe a, a, a fee deposit, for the assessment yeah. or a deposit, mm -hmm. whether it's refundable or not. Those are all things you can think about. But they pay something and they do some stuff. Right. And there's a couple of things. One is they've invested, and the other thing is that if you make it hard enough, but you're good enough, in other words, if there's less of you to go around than the demand, so people really want it, and they go through, they jump through a bunch of flaming hoops, when they get to you and you talk price and things like that, they've already made the decision to buy. Right. It's just, can they afford it? Because they don't want to, you know, did they see the real value there? They don't want to go repeat that for somebody else. So if they really believe in you and you've shown them real value as part of that process they've invested, they're not going to say no. Right. They're going to say yes. Mm -hmm. So Sam, anything either from a teaching perspective or as a participant? Yeah, I mean, as a participant, I've gotten invaluable amounts of information from mastermind groups from, you know, more of the, the mindset and strategic piece of you know kind of how we looked at our business of you know what it what it really means to be the tip of the spear in your business right it doesn't mean you know for us literally being the guy on the floor right and that of how to you know remove yourself delegate and then give the opportunity to scale mm -hmm. right so we've gone in from, fact if you're the guy on the floor all the time it's impossible you're not gonna be able to run it's impossible business. so you know we've gone from you know however many years ago the first time I went out to three days to success to you know not being able to fill the school and being there all the time to now you know in a not aggressive but expansion mode where we're opening multiple locations yeah, yeah. and multiple locations of which you know once it's up and running I don't need to be there right um, so well because you've designed it that way exactly, from the start exactly you said what do I want this to look like you know, when it's really yeah. firing. You know, so that, you know, design with the end in mind kind of, of approach. So from the strategic end, you know, from the, the tactical, logistical end of things, you know, everything from, you know, writing better headlines to how to how to create better, you know, digital marketing campaigns. It's, you know, you, you get it. You get a little bit of everything uh, as long as you're open to it. And, and it all kind of fits and fuels together. That's just it. One of the things we say to people, and, and it's worth saying now, is if you're hearing something, you go, oh, I already do that, or that didn't work for me, mm -hmm. or I've tried that before and that didn't work. Um, that's usually a sore spot and something that needs attention, and part of your brain is telling you that so that you can continue to ignore it. Right. Are you saying that because I said that the other day? <laughs> <laughs> Well, from a facilitator standpoint, and I, I think you do this too, one of the things that I do to keep my perspective fresh and to be open to learning in reverse is whenever I meet anybody or whenever mm -hmm. I have somebody come in, I always say, this person is better, smarter, faster at me or has some skill or ability that I don't. Mm -hmm. And I want to find out what it is, and I want them to teach it to me, right. like lovingly. And like I want them to want to teach it to me and make me good at it too. And I think that has a couple of positive effects, which is I don't burn out on the audience, and the audience right. is deeply engaged with me because I'm inviting that. Now I have to earn that by giving them some really amazing stuff yeah. too, which I don't think we've ever failed to do because we've had Marines and. Uh, Air Force, Army, 
pistol instructors teaching people to shoot the Glock 19 as a metaphor. We taught them to shoot safely, but not well. Mm -hmm. Then we showed them a little couple of tricks and they got way better. Yep. And so each year there's a metaphorical activity. This year we've got a really good one. Should we t talk about escape or is it too soon? Maybe too soon. Yeah, I think they need to. Uh... So there's always a theme. Yeah. Last year was preparedness. So the idea was that if you're really prepared in all areas of your life and you know you understand this idea and there's a tension between these two things of being able to travel light and work light, but two is one and one is none. Mm -hmm. and there seems to be some tension there. But if we could get you prepared for any eventuality and we put you through all kinds of crazy things in the desert, then real life doesn't seem so threatening or menacing anymore. It seems right. easy. And we even did things like build go bags. If there's a disaster, how do you get from your work home? If you have to leave your home, what should be in your car? Right. So last year was preparedness. And this year is going to be escape. So escape some of the um, sort of troughs that we've dug ourselves into yeah. and stay in to learn to spot the cognitive biases and get over them. And also, at the same time, how to use cognitive right. biases then. So there's a main theme, which is escape for this year, and then there are two supporting themes, and uh, we'll talk about those as we go. But for me, um, I cannot tell you how much I learn two ways as a facilitator, and I know that you're building out your program now with yeah. materials and things like that. And we have, do we not have amazing materials at Business oh, yeah. Jobs? So I have to prepare the theoretical framework for mm -hmm. it, all the materials that go along with that, the, we're calling it the lecture piece. It's very integrative. Yeah. Um, and there is some mind control that goes on, like positive mind control experiments. We use everything except that the CIA used except the LSD. <laughs> so, well, most of us. Yeah, right? I was going to say there was definitely, there's some, definitely some LSD <laughs> use. Some, there's some <laughs> hallucinogens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the other thing is that you're going to find when you do these things that there's going to be a range of people. In some masterminds, you'll be the smartest guy in the room, mm -hmm. and you have to be careful not to shut down the idea because right. these people who may not know as much as you about the particular thing you're talking about, right. they may know other amazing things, or they may be using things in their business that you could use in yours if you're open to it. And then other times, you're going to be the slowest man or woman in the room, and that's okay too. That's just going to be the nature of the beast that some people well, will. I think that's, that's part of the benefit of a mastermind group is you're going to have a high level of expertise in probably one area, mm -hmm. uh, maybe two or three if you're really you know, a high performer, so to speak. But being part of a mastermind group, and Tim Ferriss talks about this a lot, is that ability to talent stack, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, you know, Alex is really good at digital marketing, and you know, I'm really good at logistics. Am I gonna be as good as Alex at digital marketing? Probably not. But if I can get to like an 80 or 90% level and stack that on my abilities with logistics, my company is gonna start skyrocketing. And so one of the things we teach everybody is, how do you identify what you're really good at and how do you teach that to other people or build it into training? Because there are sometimes people uh, in forming their company or uh, not scaling their company, but sort of the slow early growth, they're good because they could do the thing they're good at, but right. they're terrible at hiring people to mm -hmm. do it. They hire the wrong people, they don't onboard them properly, and they don't teach them properly. Yeah. So if you can, it's like um, marketing. If you're a great marketer and you bring all these leads in, but people can't sell them, That's right. you've got a debacle on your hands. Yeah. And then if they come in and they're sold, but they're not onboarded properly, mm -hmm. by, you've got a debacle on your hands. So we have this whiteboarding process that is super useful to me. So I learned by creating the program and uh, what you call hot seats, we tend to do through a whiteboarding process right. where we take people through, how do people hear about you? What happens next? Do they come and see you or do they buy? Then what happens? Then what happens? And we find out what are the resources? What are the training? Are now, are you doing an intensive on that this year? I am. The, like a pre, pre event? I am. I'm going to have uh, four people maximum. And we're going to whiteboard each of their um, businesses, and they're going to leave with a strategic and tactical plan. Specifically, I remember a couple years ago we did. Uh, you were at the. It was like a VIP day at the ranch, and there was only eight of us there. Mm -hmm. So it was a few more people than what you're talking about. This that was week. good though. But that was amazing, and doing that beforehand really, uh, it made the rest of the event that much more powerful. 
and I'm fresh then. Yeah. Which yeah. at the end of three days, I mean, we could, we could all talk about this too. It's true of consulting. It's mm-hmm. true of masterminding. You, if you are giving your all, if you're the facilitator yeah. and you're getting people there and bringing them in and constructing the event and building the material, you are going to be exhausted. Yeah. So B12, a uh, high level of caffeine. Utopian. Utopian. Yeah. Uh, nootropics. Yeah. We yeah. probably should consider using Well, well I mean, that's something that you can extend out to. Like, think about the cost of being on for three days. Yeah. The right mental and physical, you know, toll that it takes. You know, whether it's, you know, teaching a seminar for three days, running a mastermind for two days, putting on a show. There's a huge amount of toll because you're you're on, right? You're at, you're at 90, you're at 100, you're at 110. So think about if you're in your business like that year round, it's going to take a toll, and your 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 100 percent in January is not going to be, or your you know your 100 percent in December is not going to be equal to your 100 percent in January unless you train properly. Exactly, and and that's part of what the mastermind is 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 you know whether it's preparation that's taking stuff off of your plate, it's freeing up mental space. And escape what we're going to be working on this year is, you know, it's going to be freeing that up so that you can be on when you need to be and you don't have to be on when you don't need to be. Yeah. And that's like, so, so if we analogize it to lifting or fitness, like mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I'm lifting all the time. If I, and, and you could talk to professional bodybuilders, I think they would tell you the same yeah. thing. And you're a professional athlete. If I just work out at the maximum that I can crank out four or five days in a row. And I don't take a break. Right. I'm not gonna. There's a periodicity. There's a. Uh, yeah, you have to wave the intensity or wave the load, whatever you want to call it. And your your body makes gains when you give it a chance to rest. And we have right. Australians that come to this event, and so it's extra exhausting. Is Tyson it, it really Franklin is. on? By right. Tyson's not on, but Dave is on. Dave Braxton. Ah, Braxton. Oh, Dave Braxton. Braxton. We were just talking about Dave. Rolling with Dave. Rolling with Dave. We're thinking about having a special episode called Rolling with Dave. Do you suggest that as our producer? Sure. <laughs> I don't think she knows what that means. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, wait, this is not the Leslie Unleashed Show yet, yeah. So I'm just well, that's another <laughs> one. So, yeah. In this case, rolling is not a LSD reference, right? Yeah. Right, well, it could be, it could be yeah. <laughs> rolling with Dave and the electric. Uh, well, never mind, I digress. Oh, right, before we, we wrap up, we should. Uh, so, thank you for everybody for taking time from a busy Sunday. Yeah. Have we been getting liking? I'm not sure yeah. if we've been getting liking and loving. And sharing, we need sharing. Yeah. So, yep, I posted uh, it too, letting everybody know. Share. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Did Dave Braxton share? Dave did share. Peer pressure, Dave. So let's call him out by name. We did. <laughs> what was it? What we revealed last, last week? We, we revealed came very close to Dox. I don't know. Was he on last week when I we were like, was, yeah, yeah oh, we yeah. were getting closer and closer to his house. You know, the satellites were zooming in. So this, I just want to say, I've had an amazing experience with this. This is not an ad. This is, we, we don't have an paid. affiliate link for it. I got it um, in one of those crowdfunding mm-hmm. programs. So I bought one so they would have money to squander on building a better version of it before they could market this one effectively. But it is a, can you hear that? So it's a, so it's a Bluetooth mm-hmm. keyboard. You can use the wire too. And it works like a typewriter. Yeah. And so, whether on my phone or whatever device, in this local coffee shop, several times already yeah, people you know, have shouted, if, "What's that sound?" If, if you know it's Bluetooth, so if you need to type something on your on your laptop or your mm-hmm. your tablet or even your phone, yeah, it was just, I was doing just whip that out, emails on you know, phone. like yeah. even even those it's oversized pocket size. Phones, don't, come, <laughs> don't come with a tactile keyboard. And you know, so you sort of have this haptic experience. Do you take that on the plane with you? I'm if going to from now on. I'm gonna <laughs> unload. I'm gonna lay it out. Put this down. Unwrap the tuna. Fish. Unwrap the tuna sandwich. Like did I tell you that I did that on the plane? Yeah, I'm. I'm that guy. Without thinking, I'm that guy. I, I took a tuna fish sandwich. Did you also have a hard boiled egg with it? <laughs> <laughs> I one time. And we. I don't think we shared this, <laughs> but I, I will next to someone. <laughs> It, this was in first class too. Just took out a container with a hard boiled egg in it. Got I don't some see salt it. out. Like You're saying shit. this like it's a bad thing. I love a hard boiled egg. I like. I, I like it. It's just the overcooked 
hard boiled egg. The sulfur. The sulfur yeah. smell on yeah. an enclosed tube hurtling through the air <laughs> is not my cup of tea. <laughs> you know? Especially because I like to sit in the bulkhead, which is usually nice. Sometimes I, I don't, but there are times where someone will get up to use the bathroom. And mm-hmm. then you get that mm-hmm. mixed with the sulfury egg smell. You throw a tuna sandwich into that mix, you've got yourself a winning <laughs> expedition. I just sometimes take like some uh, some of the earplugs. Play like, <laughs> <laughs> like, carry gasoline with you. Just yeah. like, really yeah. it. Wow. I uh, just want to share that one time it, we had to drive across Argentina because our jet that we had um, chartered, which by the way sounds extravagant, but was very reasonable. Because um, you get like ten dollars Argentine for every American dollar, and there yeah. were a bunch of us. But bad weather was rolling in, and a gentleman had to get to his daughter's wedding, so we drove, and we didn't pass cars sometimes for you know like six, seven, eight hours, and we stopped to refuel. And there was a, uh, I say it was refrigerated. Other people disagree with this <laughs> when the story is retold. It was a vending machine that had a tuna sandwich in there, which I was like, I am in the mood. This wasn't at the Ball Bearing Pharmacy, was it? <laughs> no, but I also went to, that factory. was in Nicaragua. Nic- sorry. Yeah, where I, I uh, because of another incident with, I, I think, uh, probably another tuna, tuna sandwich, sandwich, I had to find a pharmacy. Um, <laughs> the word Cipro leaps to mind. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when I asked in my sort of primitive Spanish, I was told, yeah, just go down to the ball bearing plant. And I thought, well, you didn't understand that properly. Yeah. Uh, that's not what they said. But then as I moved in the direction he was pointing, I asked other people, they would all say, yeah, the ball bearing plant. And it turns out that the ball bearing plant was also the local pharmacy. Mm. So it's nice. It's good. There is also, I just want to go on record as saying, if you're ever in a swamp in Nicaragua, I don't want to get into a lot of detail on that, um, the anacondas are gigantic. Sometimes you do. Yeah, if you ever just find yourself there. Uh, Wear a headlamp, and when you see those eyes... You should probably have a firearm of some sort with you. (laughs) I did. (laughs) I did. So, uh, one let before we wrap up, we're gonna we're gonna just mention the sharing and the dot again, and then we're each going to uh, just give one more plug for some reason that we think that everybody should do a uh, a mastermind, and or something that they should make sure they incorporate if they're going to set one up. So if you want to win an Echo Dot so that the NSA and uh, Amazon can just listen right yeah, in. they record everything. Yeah. You can order. You can get food. Just you say get food. Starbucks. Starbucks, yep. So it's fantastic. Uh, just you're voluntarily giving up your privacy. I guess net neutrality. They say that right in there. There's a little card yeah. that says we record everything. Everything. At all. Something. You can turn it off, supposedly. <laughs> I, I have don't a, think net, this would not or net neutrality would no it's going to help Amazon because yeah. Amazon's yeah. one of the big dogs yeah. so if the if net neutrality becomes a casualty of the current politics I don't even understand why we're having this debate it's not good so but anyway you'll still be able to order stuff this way because yeah. Amazon yeah. will be the big beast and we won't be able to sell that's you that's the stuff. only right. way that you'll be able to buy things on yeah so uh, if you'd like one of these or Tools for Titan, you do not have to voluntarily accept seven microphones in one little neat packet. I like um, how they boast about that. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's a good thing. With seven microphones, beam-forming technology, and noise cancellation, <laughs> Echo Dot hears you from across the room and responds. Which we know is true. She hears us from another speaker room. Or connected speaker. By the way, were you with me? I think you were in the uh, place where we saw the robots being... The yeah, armed robot. So disturbing. So it said there is a <laughs> armed cur- robot. Well, no, these it, currently were unarmed. It says it currently, currently, unarmed but it said street. currently, and it was a policing robots. It was this was a commercial on general consumer television <laughs> in a barbecue place. Just getting you ready for it, I think. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there, they said it could be used for corporate campuses to. Um, it didn't maintain use the, the terms. Yeah, it didn't say the term "spy on your employees," but essentially that's what they were saying. <laughs> uh, like, kind of um, monitor and protect them. That's violent right. neighborhoods was something they actually said on there, and then it said "currently unarmed." Currently, so disturbing. Currently, yeah. yeah. So that's laying the groundwork, kind of like I do for the alien invasion by letting people know about the bases on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. 
Are you talking to Jeff Bezos? <laughs> well, he goes up and down all the time. Oh, Tucker, is he, is he in the shot? Yeah. He is, yeah. Uh, Tucker was in the well, video too, I think. Yeah. Well, I he was po he was posing and he carrying was smiling. on. Smiling. Smiling, yeah. Think he was near a gun somewhere. In the best <laughs> ways. He's a hunting dog. He is. Badger right. hunting. He is trained for badger hunting, but he is very happy hunting rats and mice. And a slow old squirrel. <laughs> but if it's a fast squirrel, he's like, Oh, what the hell? So uh, let's each just make one more recommendation about Mastermind before we go. Oh, you got to like, love us, like or love us. No, that's not enough. You have to share. Share on Facebook. Give us a written review. We're going to enter you twice. Um, or give us a five-star review. And you got to let, if you do any of those things, let Leslie know what your address is. Because Please if we pull you, us. yeah, if we pull your name, because we have a prize we're trying to give away. Yeah. We want to mail I mean, something. lots of people. And Steve yeah. Richardson is still mad because I did send him the prize that he won, but I owe him um, my description of how I do note taking. Has there been a show where we don't mention Steve? I don't think there has. <laughs> Since the very early days where it was just well, it was on the, your page. Yeah, and the yeah, writing yeah. was reversed. Right. Tucker, what do you say? Tucker has uh, shown a behavior that I call generalizing. So a big truck comes and it delivers mail and the postman throws Tucker a bone, for which he's very grateful. The weekend mail driver's not the same, but Tucker understandably is morally outraged when he sees a mail truck and doesn't get the bone. Right. But now he sees UPS and he's like, the guy's bringing some stuff, so I better get my bone. But what's interesting is he has trained the UPS driver who was not giving him bones by furiously barking at him <laughs> yes. to now start giving him bones. So... I don't know if he's... Oh, that's a great... Probably going to be a great shot. I don't know if he knows what he's doing. What is that called? Anthropomorphizing or something? Mm -hmm. When we... Look at someone. He is also able to open drawers and closet doors without an opposable thumb, which seems weird to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true of Steve Richardson as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve has an opposable thumb. We're only joking. <laughs> <That's the one. laughs> Big <laughs> <laughs> There's some kind of a joke about that. I can't remember. Anyway, let's just do one more promo <laughs> of Mastermind. So one more thing you like or that you think somebody should. Yeah, uh, you know. The, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, I'm going to answer now <laughs> after that debacle. <laughs> the, one of the great things about a Mastermind group is. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get a view of things that you don't see in your own business because you're in it, mm -hmm. right? So when you're in it, it's hard to see it. You know, your head's down, you're in the trenches, or you've just taken for granted the way you do things because they're working, yeah. right? But maybe but, not optimized. But not optimized, exactly. So that's an excellent reason to do it, Alex. I think there are benefits to both joining a mastermind that is not just full of people from the same industry and vice versa. There are benefits to joining a mastermind yeah. of people who are just in your industry because I think you get two benefits from each, well, two different benefits. Mm -hmm. If you have a group of people who are in different industries and have a different mindset about things, you're going to learn new ways of doing things or new strategies or new tactics. If you have people within your industry, you're learning you can sort of learn what they're doing and what's working in the industry mm -hmm. and they're, for them. They're, so there's new ways and there's better ways. Right. And they're, uh, they may be in the same industry, but serving a different, different demographic. demographic. Yep. Or a different Or if uh, the same, they may have be able to share data with you that makes you say, oh, yeah. Right. Oh. So I, and I strongly encourage uh, everybody to, at some point, run their own, not necessarily for profit, mm -hmm. because the act of preparing for it, for picking themes, right. for putting together the materials, um, and being open, being the facilitator, and being there and listening to all these other things is going to make you smarter, faster, stronger, and more powerful. So, Leslie, thank you and your kind husband for the Somewhere. amazing video. Do we can, we, can you make a camera? Shot? Yeah. yeah. Come on in. For the, come get in the shot. You're always behind oh, the camera. That's, yeah, come on over here. My place is my natural place right behind the camera. No. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, there he is. All right. 
so thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm just so excited about the video. I'm sure everybody watching will be too. There's a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot yeah. going on. That shot you set up with the slider at the very start too is. So I encourage everybody when the video comes out to look at the books and the stuff lined up there because the there are some Easter eggs eggy. for you. There are. There are Easter eggs. Yeah. 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 All righty, everybody. Thank you so much. This was awesome. We will see you next week. Remember to be in top form. Cool. That was good. Nice.